Emotions in life are very critical indicator of what is going on within us. They reveal the condition of our hearts and they reveal the things that we are passionate about and the things that we are not passionate about. Case in point, there's a time as I was growing up as a young kid, I saw a hawk soup and uh, take a chick from a hen. And uh, this uh, hawk proceeded to perch itself on top of a tree just nearby and systematically started clawing away on this chick. And it just broke my spirit. It just broke my heart at that point in time. But other kids will be laughing at the same incidents. Two people, same incident, different emotions. What does that have to tell us about what our purpose in life is? And I want us to discuss how we can discover our purpose by way of emotions today. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. At the individual level, there are several things that you can do that are obvious, that can lead you to discover what your purpose in life is. Believe me, each and every single one of us has a unique ability and has a unique calling upon their lives. Life is not meant just to be lived so that we can pay bills and then die. You see, if you look at the cross-section of life that people normally live, that's exactly it. They live to pay bills and then they die. But that is not the calling of the human being. The human being is totally different from the bird of the air, from the fish of the sea, and from the animal of the field. Totally different, whether the animal is domesticated or not. The human being is a higher species as compared to these ones. And the human being is supposed to fulfill a particular purpose, a particular mission, and a particular vision for their lives. There is meaning for the human. And I know there is meaning for every animal, for every creature, for every living and non-living thing. There is just absolutely nothing that is just there and it's useless. Nothing exists just to, to be useless. Everything is connected to everything. But when it comes to the individual human being, there is an essence in them. There is a purpose in them that actually signifies the entirety of their lives. And when we live outside of this purpose, what happens? We become... People who are not fulfilled, people who are not doing what we were called to do, and at the end of the day, we have missed the mark by a large margin. And the problem is that we have flipped life in such a way that we are living, you know, to look for things, to accumulate stuff, to arrive, you know, to be able to make it in life, whatever that means. But I tell you that at the end of the day, you will know that there is something missing. You will always know that there is something missing. Every time you try to accumulate something, you just get a fleeting moment of fulfillment. And then the emptiness comes and haunts you. You ask, what in the world is there? And the thing that is missing is purpose. So we're discussing, how can you inch closer to your purpose in this series? And we've looked at several things. The first thing you can do is to ask questions, to become a seeker. If you don't seek, you don't find. If you don't ask you don't receive if you don't knock the door doesn't get opened for you purpose is not revealed for someone who isn't a seeker so if you wanted to, to your purpose to be revealed to you to inch closer to your purpose start asking questions start seeking start searching for it be a seeker and believe me it's just a matter of time before you re you get re revelation of what it is the second thing is you look at your gifts and your talents why would i gift you with a voice 
to sing. If I didn't want you to sing, why would I give you an ability to write if I didn't want you to become a writer or a creator of words? Why would I give you an ability to play football if I did not want you to become a, an athlete? Why would I gift you this way and you do exactly the opposite? My point is that your gifts and your talents reveal what you are meant to do with them. If I give you a slasher, I want you to slash. I do not want you to sit on it. If I give you a gun, I want you to protect and secure. I do not want you to use, to maim, use it to maim and, maim and kill people. People abuse themselves because they don't use their gifts and their talents. Anyway, your gifts and your talents are supposed to be a hint telling you that this is what God wanted you to do. This is what God wanted you to use it for. And then we've said in the previous episode that you're supposed to use ideas to at least connect you. In fact, ideas are pulling you towards what your purpose is. So every time you see an idea dangling before you, it is actually saying, hey, guess what? This is what you're meant to do. It is actually beckoning and calling you towards what you're supposed to be doing. So follow through the ideas that come to your mind and come to your spirit. And then yesterday in the episode, we say that take action. Don't sit at home doing nothing. Because sitting at home doing nothing does not lead you to anything. And I know you can be as super spiritual as you want to be, you know, waiting on God. God is actually waiting on you to get active, to start doing something. And the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered of God. In other words, the guy who is in motion, the guy who is in action is the one that God is directing. Not the guy who is sitting, doing absolutely nothing. There is a place for you sitting, doing nothing when you need a miracle. When you are between a rock and a hard place, oh, your mind is not thinking. I mean, there is basically no nothing humanly possible that you can do. That is a place to be still and to know that God is God and wait for his deliverance. But when you are, you are an able-bodied man, there is trash to be taken out. There is a room to be cleaned up. There are houses to wash and there is uh, activity to do. Come on, get active. And as you are active, you're going to be led smack into the middle of your purpose. Today, your emotions. Have you ever been so passionate about something and people take it for granted? For you, it is drawing you so hard. You feel it, you sense it in your spirit so hard. But for others, they can't even understand why you're so obsessed with it. Why are you so intense? Lawrence, why are you so intense with prayer? What's wrong with you? I mean, why are you so intense with this thing? There's a reason. That intensity, that emotion, that passion is a revelation of what God put inside of me in terms of the things that I'm supposed to do. And how can I say this succinctly? How can I say this, you know, enough? All the decisions we make, all of them, do you know what? They are connected to our emotions. We are emotional human beings. And those emotions have a way of revealing what our purpose is. In fact, we are only emotional creatures. We are 100% emotional. The only emotional creatures that God created are the humans. And I hope I'm right on this one. And I know at times, let me tell you, there's a time I was in the village and uh, there's this calf that uh, I think it died and uh, they started dis dissecting it so that they can feed it to the, the dogs. And the cows they had came by and there was this bull that passed by and it started smelling the, the blood and it, it started weeping. I kid you not, it just started weeping. For some reason it just knew that part of part of part of the herd has, has been massacred. Anyway, my point is that our emotions should mean something. Okay, we don't have a whole gamut of emotions for everything. But where we are intensity, where we have intensity with the emotions, it should mean something. And let me tell you, there are two major emotions that can give you a hint of what your purpose in life is. The first emotion is anger. Anger and hate. Anger is a good emotion. I tell you, it is a good emotion. 
What makes you angry? Flip it. On the other side of what makes you angry is something that you are passionate about. For example, if you are if if someone starts describing rape, okay? And you get worked up, you get angry. You get absolutely livid. And you are so red in the face, you can kill somebody. That reveals to you that you have compassion for the vulnerable, for the girl, for the person who is being ostracized. That is passion in action, right, right there. And that tells you that that is where your vision or your purpose can be located. What makes you angry? What do you seriously hate? You know, people normally say, Christians normally you should not hate. Let me tell you, hate is actually smack in the middle of the Bible. It is right there. What makes you angry? There's a time Jesus Christ went into the temple and, re I mean, clobbered guys. And after that, they say that the disciples remember the scripture that says, Your zeal, the zeal for your house shall consume me. What makes you angry? Whatever makes you angry can easily connect you to what your purpose is. It is because the opposite of what you are really angry is what you really want. You want peace if you are angry about war. You want decorum if you are angry about people, you know, taking advantage of girls. Do you hate segregation? And you hate apartheid? Then you are a Martin Luther King Jr., or you are a Nelson Mandela and that's what your purpose is. To see justice. To see equity and equality. Do you hate sickness? Then you must be a health worker. And you must be an inventor. And invent penicillin and all these things. A doctor. Do you hate ignorance? You must be a teacher. An illuminator, a revelator of things. A trainer, a coach, an educator. You get my point? Whatever you hate, you must have an antidote within you. And that antidote is basically the revelation of what your purpose in life is. That's the emotion of anger and the emotion of hate. But then there's the other emotion of love, the emotion of joy, the emotion of fulfillment. When is the last time you really were fulfilled? And you really felt the sense of joy, the sense of peace, the sense of fulfillment. And there is no money attached to it. No gain, monetary or tangible gain attached to your joy and your fulfillment. Can you think about that? This is one of the hardest for people. People can seldom imagine the day that they were really happy, really joyous, really exuberant. And money was not involved or a material gain was not involved but if you can get that emotion if you can get that time when you are so joyous so happy over the moon and nobody had paid you whatever it is you are doing whatever it is you are thinking about whatever it is you are involving yourself in it is a hint a major hint of what your purpose in life is. Can you remember that? Can you remember that moment in life? That, my friend, could very well be the purpose. Maybe just one degree close to your purpose. Your emotions reveal something. They are not neutral. They indicate. If you are in a job, let me tell you this, and I've been there before. You're in a job and you're wasting away. There is no joy. You are competent. Yes, you're competent. You're running through the activities they're giving you and you're finishing them. And, but there is no joy. There's just some dryness. Some, some, this, just some foreboding. It reveals to you that that's not what your purpose is. So you need to think twice and you need to pivot like my friend Joseph Ajal says in his book. You need to pivot from that situation and look for where your purpose is. My point is simply this, my friends. Every human being has an emotion. 
and your emotions could be an indicator of what your purpose is or what your purpose is not according to what you're connected to or what you're doing at that moment in time emotions are a big revelator so start taking care of what your emotions are what you're feeling in the moment at the moment start analyzing what it is if you find that you're angry on the things that you're seeing on the face of the earth it reveals what your emotion is it reveals what your purpose is and what you're supposed to do it is on the flip side of that anger if you find that you are joyous and fulfilled and you are in love with and there's no money attached to it as where your purpose is my friend as long as it is not breaking any laws <laughs> of the land and the laws of spirituality so in the podcast tomorrow we're going to discuss something else that reveals what your purpose in life is but today watch your emotions until tomorrow bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.